So can I just ask then, you know, what, what does a typical day involve for you as a life coach? As a life coach, well, most of my days I'm working with private clients and um, that would be generally four or five private clients in a day and probably 70% of my work is working individually with people on a face-to-face, one-to-one basis. Um, the other work that I do is corporate work going into companies uh, who offer life coaching to their employees as a, as a service and the rest of my week would be some major work, so writing, do quite a lot of writing for online uh, magazines and websites and do some radio interviews and anything else that kind of interests me and that comes along. So quite varied, my work is very varied, but my, my favourite and, and the majority of my work is private, face-to-face client work. And on a, if you met a first client for, for the first time, you know, what, what kind of things do you think you would start off by doing you know, to, to help yeah. give them life coaching? Well, I offer an initial consultation in my business, which I think most people take, and that's an hour, often longer actually, maybe up to 70, 75 minutes, where it's an opportunity for us to meet each other. And that gives a potential client a really an insight into whether they think coaching is for them and whether I am for them, because again, it's a very personal choice. And in that meeting, um, that's my opportunity to find out about as much as anybody wants to share with me in terms of what's happening in their life or equally what's not happening and what they would like to change. So that's quite a information giving, information gathering, quite an extensive session uh, where we also then um, discuss or I discuss what is coaching, what's the difference between coaching and counselling or therapy because there is quite a, a, a difference in the approach, the professional support that's offered and then with what the client shared with me um, I put together a, a kind of plan of action should they choose to work with me but that initial consultation is uh, without obligation to work with me but often um, and frequently people do um, so that's a kind of fact finding. That's my very starting point to find out what's what's happening to people, uh, happening with people. Because again, most of the people that come to meet me, I've not spoken to, um, or they haven't shared too much in their initial contact with me. What what about kind of, you know, as you start to build, if someone does choose to, you know, yeah, to to commit to, um, the the partnership of yes. life coaching. What kind of things do you, would you do kind of further down the line? What would you work on? Well, really, at that, at, yeah, at that initial consultation, we know the areas that are important to work with, and that would be something that I would highlight and outline. You know, based on what you've told me, I would think that so many sessions might be relevant, and we would work on A, B, C, X, Y, and Z. Seldom six things. You know, often four sessions is absolutely um, enough. So at the first session, then, if people chose to work with me, unless something different had happened in people's lives which actually can happen from the time they've initially met me we would start with either what what people think is the most important area uh, to work on or many say well you, you choose we i'll leave it to you what where do you think based on what they'd already told me and where they're at we, sh- we should work and then coaching the coaching sessions follow what's important to that person in their life to, always with the aim to you know create that end result that, that is meaningful to that person so just kind of the, the specifics of your job yeah. um if you know if i came in as a client myself and you know i had an issue around let's say making friends at university yeah. i just joined university you know is there anything in particular you would kind of hone in on to try and develop that yeah, I think, you know, whatever anybody comes about, it's it's not initially focusing on that, it's understanding the strengths around that or, or the, the background to that in terms of, well, what, what, so for that example, what kind of friends have you already got and, and where are they and what skills have you got, have you got that um, would could de- help to develop friendship? So I don't tend to leap into the, the challenge or the, the problem that the person's experiencing, but more look at why direct, well, let's let's almost celebrate the, the strengths that are in that area at the moment. And then down the line, if we were looking absolutely at making friends, it's understanding the opportunities to make friends, maybe joining clubs or, or, or you know, feeling a bit more confident to maybe speak to people who are sitting beside in lectures or 
how you really expand out your comf comfort zone because the area of met met making friends is you know generally around our confidence or maybe how we view ourselves and how we maybe view ourselves in comparison to other people not being good enough or not being intelligent enough, not feeling confident enough, not being attractive enough, being too X, Y and Z. So we explore all of that, but also underpinning that why that's important, why it actually matters to that person, for example, that they, they make friends, because that can be often the momentum or the motivation to take things forward. So it's fair to say in coaching, um, there's a lot of talking and there's a lot of um, kind of action planning. The work in coaching often happens out with the session that the person then is going to try out some of the techniques or the strategies that we've discussed in there as well. Does that, does that kind of make sense? Definitely. Yeah. Um, so you think more, it's more kind of building on strengths and seeing where someone's at at this current stage when they come and see you to then try and develop that further? Yes, like, or understand the gaps there as well. You know, because we could leap into, you know, why people haven't made friends or why it's difficult and that that very much focuses on the negative so we're not going in from a particular place of positivity there so but you know that's what the goal is that's the objective so that's what we focus on but we we come um or i like to you know have a buffer of goodness if we like or strengths in there as well and that would be the same with confidence i work with many people around you know increasing their confidence and rather than me leap in there and give some strategies and worksheets and tools on that, it's understanding why why that matters and what environments people would want to be more confident. Because generally it's not all aspects of life. It's maybe socially, maybe it's professionally. Um, so we look at you know the areas that people are perhaps confident in and how they can carry that into other aspects. And just a kind of final question then. So sure. what, what made you get into life coaching? Was it something that you always were interested in? or No, I haven't always been interested in, uh, I didn't even know about life coaching, to be honest. So really what prompted me to explore life coaching was, my background's in the corporate world, so I've worked with some blue chip companies and I've always been managing teams of training. And I moved from one company to the next to find one that valued its people more than its potential targets or KPIs or numbers. Because for me as a manager, you know, if you really value your people, appreciate your people, those things will happen. So the last company that I worked for, which was O2, brought in an external coach from London at the time. I was based in Glasgow and that was the first insight I'd had to coaching. Um, and I thought, well, that's really what I want to do. So that's what I did. I pursued where I could qualify, where I could get some insight into that. And that led me to then consider leaving leaving the blue chip world, leaving the corporate world and setting up my business. Because I think, you know, people are, people are everything in every aspect of our lives. How do you feel since you've kind of made the transition over to this then? Is it, is it what you expect it to be? Is it better? I think it's, a, I don't think I really had any expectations other than I kind of followed my heart. And it's, I love it. I love the flexibility of my own business. I love the diversity of the areas that I work with um, and work in and you know I'm inspired all the time by every single client that comes to work with me so I can have a better job. I've no regrets over the, leaving the corporate world. I still work in the corporate world and I think that background helps me there but yeah um, is it what I expected? I know it's a million times better. Um, what life coaching does is it puts you at the heart of, of, of everything and so for anybody considering life coaching it's it's a it's a journey of ownership where you really get to know yourself and you know what makes you tick and what, you know, uh, makes you retreat into your shell. And so life coaching is an empowering, challenging, sometimes exciting process. So I think as one of my clients wrote on a testimonial, try it, you've nothing to lose. <laughs>